iOS 4.1 is out and there are good and bad things to talk about it. The iPod Touch gets released, positive reviews so far, and the dev team is a tad closer to getting iOS 4.1 jailbroken. All this and more coming up right now. Hello everybody, I'm going to practice saying it slow again. I'm Jaime Rivera. Welcome to the Pocket Now iReview, the show where we go through all the week's cool and not so cool inside the world of Apple's iOS devices. Let's start off this week as always with the cool. iOS 4.1 is out and for the most part things are cool. iPhone 3G owners are not complaining anymore, their devices are not sluggish, the proximity sensor issues have been dealt with, and sadly, no, you're not going to get any antenna gate issues fixed if you have this problem. Apparently, this is not going to fix that issue, but Game Center's out. A lot of people are saying that it's cool, even though we'd probably want a couple of more games in there. HDR photography is there for the most part, though there are things that could be improved. And, well, you can upload HD videos over Wi-Fi, and also, TV rentals are there for a buck, even though TV buys are there on Amazon, too. So, you have a lot of new choices, a lot of cool things. Uh, not everything's perfect, but for the most part, iOS 4.1 is considered by many to be a success so far. Well, the next generation iPod touches out, and a lot of cool things have been said about the device and pretty much of the whole new iPod lineup, including the fact that you can use your new iPod Nano as a watch. Kind of cool. But regarding the iPod Touch, which is the one we're interested on, things are cool. Retina display is out. FaceTime videos over Wi-Fi are out. HD video recordings with the backward camera are cool, even though, sadly, still images are not that cool because this is a dot .7 megapixel camera which is pretty much just video stills. You know, even camcorders can't really do a good job on that, so we're not gonna hold it that bad on the next generation iPod Touch. And as things are going with FaceTime becoming mainstream with the iPod Touch, the iPhone 4, positively the next iPad coming out next year, and even Macs with their iSight cameras, let's see what happens to phone calls eventually. So yeah, in general, things are cool with the next generation iPod Touch, great impressions, a really good steal if you take advantage of it. Continuing on with the cool, it seems that Apple is loosening up a bit with the restrictions on what tools can be used to generate apps for iOS. If you remember months ago, Apple became really restrictive about this because they said you can use paid tools to generate apps like, for example, Flash. They were stuck on the fact that HTML5 was free and that developers should stick to HTML5. Well, the problem with that was a lot of developers had to regenerate their apps and come up with HTML5 versions of their apps, and this really made things difficult for people that are already invested on these tools. So Apple is really opening the door again and just letting developers do what they do best and bring their stuff however they want to, and this just smells like Apple wants to fit things for competition because, you know, it, it developers can use anything for Android, and it's going to be the same deal for Windows Phone 7, so you know how competition is. Continuing on with more cool stuff, it seems iOS 4.1 is getting closer to being jailbroken. According to hacker Pot2G, apparently there's an exploit that is so big within the boot ROM or, I don't know, somewhere, I'm not a developer to know these things, but apparently it's something that's so big that it's going to take Apple a lot of stuff to get this fixed, and probably this could be as big as to be able to get iOS devices to be jailbroken, even with future releases. This is just a rumor, not really confirmed. Let's see what happens from here on, and let's hope it's as simple as jailbreakme.com, though we can't hold our breath on this one. Let's see what happens. And let's start off with the not so cool. Let's start talking about the things that did not make it to devices with iOS 4.1. First of all, nothing was mentioned on the keynotes, but for some reason, Game Center did not make it to the iPhone 3G. HDR photography didn't even make it to the iPhone 3GS, so fragmentation's getting really bad here. And it was totally logical that HD videos over Wi-Fi were not gonna be available for these old devices with no HD video recordings, but we're still trying to understand which are the hardware limitations for the other two things to not have made it. And even if there are, you know, the cool thing is for Apple to tell us things from the start and not to release an update and then for people to eventually know that this is going to happen. Apple really, you know, the cool thing is for you to tell us things just like you did with iOS 4, not bringing multitasking to the iPhone 3G and telling people these things on the keynote. We do expect for you to do this for new future releases and for people to know what they're expecting once they get their upgrade. Continuing on with the not so cool, Sony's PSP ads are at it again. Now they're called Marcus Doesn't Play That. And they have this little kid Marcus, who's probably nine years old, telling kids, hey, I'm not going to play this or I'm not going to play that. But the problem is they have really lame games in the ads. I mean, 
Sony, grab your marketing dudes, go get Marcus, and give him a game called Nova, or I don't know, there are so many cool games within the App Store, and ask Marcus if he wouldn't play that. I'll bet you he would. That's it for today's iReview. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions or comments you have about this video, let us know at twitter.com slash pocketnowtweets or youtube.com slash pocketnowvideo. That's it for now.